Ryan's had a, a long, you know, history of, of that stuff. What do you make of everything that's been going on with Ryan? And on top of that, you know, the the results of what happened with him and Haney with the uh, the positive drug test. I don't know. I, that's a lot. <laughs> but I know the mental health stuff is like it's just pressure. You know, he's pressure. There's a lot of pressure on him. He got a lot of pain. He's making a lot of money. That's what comes with it. It's hard to it's hard to stay strong every day. I'll tell you that much. For you and that and them shoes. So but as far as all the other stuff and the drug tests and all that stuff, I really don't know. But I know a lot of a lot of people don't know that when you do vodka and you do anti doping, a lot of fans don't know this is that when I fought Eric Morales in 2012, he tested positive the night before the fight for steroids. We did, I believe it was anti-doping, U.S. anti-doping. They came, they told me, Danny tested positive. So we go down, the commissioner gets him. The commissioner says, that's in between you and him to figure it out the price going on. We have nothing to do with that. So when you do a test, it has nothing to do with the commissioner. It's a it's a it's a it's a it's a um contract between you and the, him. So the commissioner can't stop the fight. So what are you gonna do and say, oh, you just know he's basically you're taking the test just to know if he he's on it or not, because they're not gonna stop the fight. It's really on you. So basically it's for no reason. What are you gonna say? No, I'm not gonna fight him the night before the fight to probably make millions of dollars. What are you gonna do? It's just Basically, you're just doing it to see if he's on it or not. That's it. Because the the commissioner only does the blood test. I mean, the urine test. Mm -hmm. They only do the urine test. So the reason why you're doing the anti-doping about it is because it's blood and urine. So it finds more steroids. It could find the steroids in the blood. But if they find out, only if it's eight weeks before, they'll stop it because there's no fight. There's no fight. There, it was eight, if they find the first couple samples that you're positive, then you can stop the fight because it's eight weeks so you get a new opponent. But if it's a week before the fight or two days before the fight, it's pointless. They're not going to stop the fight. That's in between you and the other guy. You're going to stay with a loss in your record and the, the world goes on. Yeah, you know, a lot of, a lot people, of people don't know that. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah, a lot of people were saying like, hey, you know, if he tested positive that Friday and Saturday for, you know, trace amounts, like why, why did the fight go through? And, and you know, why did it take so long for the results to come by? But it, it takes a while for the results to come in, right? Well, if he, if he tested positive the, the week of the fight, it's because this, the, probably the sample he did before the week, like the week of the probably like a month before it came in, whatever. So that's why they got it before. You just don't do it the night before the fight and then you come the next day. No, it's, it was like a couple weeks before. Mm. So that's what happens. Yeah, you know, your your instance with Eric was crazy, man, because like even then I was surprised the fight went through, you know, and like in the with like Devin, the commissioner said, look, that's up to you guys to figure out. That's cr that's so wild to me. You would think the commissioner would be like, nah, we're good. Like they don't have nothing to do with that. Yeah, that's it. That's a contract between you and the other guy. Mm -hmm. What are you going to say no the night before the fight? And I'm pretty sure Devin Haney thought that he was going to beat him anyway. He thought he was better than him. He just simply thought he that's why he fought him because he thought he was better. He thought he was gonna go in and just outbox him and beat him. He didn't think that was gonna be like that. Yeah, but that's then like, on the flip side, that's why like, went, like look what happened to Devin. You know, I, I you know that that's the other side of the argument is like that's why that's in place, right? Like, because like look, look at the damage. You know, Ryan says, like, yo, what happened was gonna happen. What they found in me was no competitive edge, this trace amount from a contaminated supplement, but on the Haney side, you know, they, they're like, yo, when you fight us, you had something. You failed two tests That's that said that. Yeah, but Ryan didn't look like he was throwing a million punches around. He still looked like he, he looked like a fighter who wasn't on steroids to me. Mm. Because he did take Browns off. He did take his time. He was hurting him, but he's a hard hitter. You know what I mean? So I just think... Ryan beat, they had a history. They were three and three. And Ryan in his head already knew he could beat him because he beat him before. And you know, boxing is all mental. If you know you could beat somebody already, then you don't care. You don't respect them. And that's all it is. Yeah, I think that played a big part. Like him knowing that, yo, 
I, I can hurt Devin. He's been hurt before by guys smaller than me that don't hit as hard as me. And I, and like you mentioned, he, he had that mentally in his mind, like, I'm just going to pressure him. Uh, but because of everything that came out, I guess, you know, that, that it puts a counter argument, especially if you're, you know, part of Devin's team or, or, or team, Haney, uh, team Haney. I mean, there's always going to be something. There's always going to be something. There's always going to be some type of excuse. No matter who it is. I'm not saying them. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying anytime somebody lose, I was sick. It was a bad day. Anything. That's just how it is. You know what I mean? Nobody except losing. Especially your first loss. I remember your post fights after the Benavidez uh, victory. And, you know, you had a lot to, to just get off your chest. You know, you were very open about the anxiety issues that you have, the mental health issues that, that you had. Uh, is, is that all sorted now, Danny? Like, you're, you're good now? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. You know, time heals all wounds. You know, it was just... That was just, like, my life. All in piled up. One moment. You know, I just need the time to just let my brain rest. You know, it was a lot of pressure on me since a kid. And that's what pretty much it was. Just over the years, just, like, building up pressure. So just being the strong person in your family. And it's just burst like a bubble. But I feel good now. And that's why I think I look so good that night is because I finally realized who I was, like, outside of the ring. And it, it made me, I was, I was able to train happy. I was able to be happy. Uh, who are you outside of the ring, Danny? Uh, that, that, that's interesting. Like, what, what was going on there that just made you kind of, like, let go of that weight, let go of that pressure? Just, uh, basically, um... Making sure I was happy before other people was happy. Sometimes when you're the person in your family who helps everybody, they forget to ask you if you're okay, you know, because you, you are the person who's changing your family, so everybody looks at you for advice. And sometimes I was putting people, other people's happiness in front of mine. And I, one day I was just like, you know what, I can't do this no more. I got to be happy. And I just started putting my happiness first, and my life changed. Yeah, can't let, You can't be afraid to let... You can't be afraid to let certain things go. You know what I mean? So that's just one thing about me is like I've always been a attached to things. Like I've always been attached to certain things in my life. Like I'll buy a car, I'll never get rid of it. And I probably should have been got rid of it. Or I'll buy a property and the value go up three times and I can make a lot of money, but I'm just attached to it. It's just same thing with people. I get attached to people and I just don't want to let them out my life. You know what I mean? And I think one thing I learned is that I have to just start Letting things go, even if it's gonna hurt, you know what I mean. And that's that's how it is. In any way, does that kind of reflect to to you as a fighter? Like you, you have this picture of, hey, I'm Danny Garcia, unified at 140, top pound for pound guy. Um, you have that picture, and then it's like you haven't fought in a while, and is it like at all kind of clash with you? Like, damn, you know, like. I'm this guy, but like, I can't show what I am or, or, or was anymore because it's just not the right timing in, in any of that. Um, I'm not, I'm not too sure of your question. Like, what do you mean? Like, like for instance, you know, say you have a, you know, they have that saying, you know, once a champion, always a champion. But like when, when a fighter yeah. takes the first loss, it's like, it's a very hard for them, a very hard thing for them to process where like, I don't know if your guys' identity is tied towards, yo, I'm this undefeated champion. And then when like a loss happens or a setback happens, it's kind of hard to to process that because you have that that in your mind and, and it puts a lot of pressure, a lot of weight, because that that's what you've tied your identity to. I never tied myself to being undefeated or losing. I never I never said, you know what, I'm gonna be undefeated to the end. I just wanted to fight the best fighters. And of course, when I lost that first time to Thurman, it was split decision, and I thought I didn't have to win. Man, I felt like somebody died in my family. That's how bad I took that loss. It's like, I felt every day I woke up, it was just like, I just felt like depressed because I, I just never thought I'd see myself losing. And I knew that was a big fight. That would have made me unified in two different divisions back to back. And uh, so, but nah, like losing didn't change me because I knew that. As you can see, I came back and then I knocked out Brandon Rios. 
you know, and then I went on to fight bigger fights in my career. Um, it didn't change me, but, you know, it just taught me about it's, at the end of the day, you got to learn how to separate your personal life from the sport of boxing. At the end of the day, it's just a sport. And that's how you got to look at it. Because if you put, if you, if you base the boxing off your happiness, you will never be happy, even in your bad sparring days. Or days you just don't feel good, you, you're going to feel sad. You just got to learn how to separate. You know what? I never want to lose, but if it does happen, then it's just a sport. And you know, you can do about it. Life goes on. Oh, yeah, man. Life does go on. That That's very, very true. Because um, I've just noticed observing like that sometimes athletes have a hard time separating those two things where they tie their identity to what they were. And then when uh, they're not as active or they retire, they have a really hard time compensating for that because their identity is tied to their athletic endeavors and they they struggle uh, with that when they're not active anymore or um, they're retired. Yeah, so I, I mean, I, I can understand because it's like, um, when you, when you when you become the best at what you do, you always got that competitive nature. And that's what I think gets you frustrated. It's like, I know I could be in there and I know I could beat that guy. You know what I mean? Like, so you get, you watch boxing and you kind of get like, um, I can't explain it. It's just like this feeling you get where it's like, you, you get like frustrated because you know that's what you are, but you can't do it right now. You understand? Or it's just like, that's why fighters fight to their, I mean, look at Bernard. A lot of fighters fight till they can't fight no more because that's who they are. They're fighters. No matter, I mean, look at Floyd still doing exhibitions. Manny Pacquiao's coming back. Um, George Foreman fought till he was 50. I, I don't know. That's who you are. You're a fighter. And I never understood. Why how can you have millions of, millions of dollars and still want to keep fighting? What's the point? And it's because that's who you are. That's your purpose. You were brought to this earth to fight. And without it, you don't feel who you are. And that's why a lot of fighters get depressed or athletes get depressed when they can't do it no more. It's because one thing you can't beat is time. Age is undefeated. Time is undefeated. And that's when you have to learn. And that's when you have to, you know, I mean, Oscar De La Hoya, he's still in the game doing promotion. He's still loving it. He's living with few other fighters. He's building guys. And I think that's the way you can actually keep your, keep your head in the game, like what I'm trying to do with my promotion, you know? Who, who knows I can't be like the next Golden Boy in 15 years or 10 years? 